Hello my soccer universe. Ah, the first two groups are in the books and we have more or less the expected results in both of these. And while this might not be all that um, exciting in the grand scheme of things, you know, but uh, for tipping and so on, it actually makes me overall quite content. I don't want to say happy, but quite content. I liked Senegal moving on over Ecuador, although I still think that Ecuador was the best team in that group. So a little bit unfair. I always am reminded of India at the last Asian Cup. And yeah, I, while I would have liked to see Iran move on as well for the simple reason that they had all this support and a great, great story. I think the United States are the better team and it then since also deserved to move on. England cruising, Netherlands also not looking convincing, but overall cruising. And I'm wondering if these are two nations that we are rightfully or wrongfully forgetting about. The other uh, big lesson from these um, two sets of fixtures is definitely that the teams that had something to lose started the games too passive and got punished for that. And Ecuador came back, Iran almost came back, but in the end, I think the right teams on the day went through. I'm not talking about the entire tournament because I think we can make an arg argument that Ecuador probably should have qualified um, as, as they were definitely not the worst team. But if you're acting that passively, I don't think you deserve it overall. We also have our first set of fixtures for the round of 16 already, which is kind of exciting, you know, knowing a little bit, little bit going forward. We have uh, the Netherlands facing the United States and with England against Senegal. I think those are two tasty ties. Quickly into the reviews of today's games. As I said, it was actually today relatively easy because uh, despite freak results could have happened that would have eliminated the Netherlands and England. Both of those games were not uh, big storylines today. The big storylines were Ecuador against Senegal and Iran against, especially Iran against United States. So uh, that's where we will focus uh, in here quickly on the Netherlands against Qatar. Uh, Qatar, I think, had one early shot on goal. The Netherlands, though, uh, asserted themselves clearly enough. And against Klasnik uh, to Gakpo, who scores his third goal already of the Tour to Tournament. It's definitely his Tour Tournament. And he's the player that kept the Dutch alive for most of the time. Um, De Jong scores right after, after the half. I mean, probably the Netherlands should have led by two, two, two goals or, already. Uh, and Steven Berghuis makes it 3-0. However, Gakpo got the ball on his hand in the build-up. So that was not. And then I think uh, Berghuis even hit uh, the crossbar. But uh, it was rather easy for the Dutch to go through. It also ends that Qatar is the second host to be eliminated in the group stage. But with the worst record of all hosts of all time. I really don't know what uh, what to say about Qatar because you know it was just three years ago that this was a team that stormed to the, to win the Asian Cup, so it's it, it didn't make much sense to me. But I guess the tournament was too big for them. As I said, the big one was definitely Ecuador against Senegal, um, a game that Ecuador was just hanging back for most of the time in the first half, and it was Senegal creating chances and missing chances. Uh, that was for me the story of the first half. And then Saar is body checked in the box. I mean, a penalty all day. Unfortunately, a penalty that if the ref doesn't give it, it's probably not even called. But it was a penalty all day. And Saar steps up and converts it. A weird celebration gesture like this. Uh, that they say, well, I didn't look, I just had it in my mind how to make it, I don't know. Uh, the second half was then a little bit more rough, but Ecuador was not hanging back and, and, and anymore. They wanted to get in the game through physicality. Idrissa Gay gets a yellow card. He's missing the uh, game against England, which I think will hurt them. And I think uh, off that free free kick, um, there came then, I think a corner corner kick that comes in. It is headed by Torres to Caicedo, and Caicedo is free. They were clearly um, not man marking in the box, and that they had no man on the post there. And the way Caicedo was free, uh, this is a goal that should not happen. 
uh, but it actually put Ecuador through. But uh, right on the coming back, it is um, again a free kick that Ana Valencia, who had been a no-show, had been a play acting most of the time through during the game, he heads it to his Koulibaly, inadvertently so, and Koulibaly really takes a nice shot, and it's three minutes after the one was 2-1 for Senegal, and then Senegal hung on to that. And as I said, on the day, I think Senegal deserved to go through. Uh, going over to Group B, it was also sim similar Wales, England uh, was not a real contest. Honestly, England just way, way too good. Phil Foden finally playing. Most England fans probably happy with that one. Took a while. I mean, there were chances or, 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 or in the first half, but it was a rather meager, a meager affair. But early in the second half, England clearly put that game uh, away at a point where they actually were level on the points with the with the US. And if the US would have ran up the score, uh, there would have been a chance to lose first place. Kind of specters of 2010 slowly floating around, but it was never uh, to be. Rashford, beautiful free kick in the 50th, and then a nice attack where Caden then squares it over to Foden, who can put it in. At that point, I said to my wife, I think it's going to get ugly, ugly for Wales. It was only one more goal. Uh, again, Rashford scoring his third. Uh, now he is joint uh, a scorer with uh, Anna Valencia, Coco de Gagbo. Um, uh, Rashford, I think there, there, are, there are a few others with three goals, uh, but you know. We had many uh, players scoring the third, third, third goal. Uh, nicely played. It could have been four. Wales not on the pitch. Even Gareth Bale coming off at the half, showing that he had actually a horrible World Cup. However, he got the one goal that everyone is talking about for Wales. Um, you know, that's probably the, the biggest memory that Wales have, that they actually at least scored a goal that got them a point. However, it was all about USA Iran with all the uh, you know negative or positive stuff uh, going on. The US FFA Federation making a, a rather lame attempt of supporting the women of Iran, which was the Novak uh, press conferences that were so uh, weird. I mean, it was not a soccer press conference. It was basically everyone for, of the US was asked political questions, and I gotta give it to Tyler Adams how he answered those uh, well but you know uh, tensions were flaring high however around the stadium it was all everyone got along and during the game yes it was a hard fought game but it was always fair it never descended in the chaos until at the very end it did because iran didn't like a call but it was not between the two teams there was uh, enough respect between those two teams and between the fan fan bases but by the way the fed the u.s fans my favorite shot was the one with the us 94 shirt and trying to make alexi lalas i think i could do a really good alexi lalas uh impression with my long hair now uh, i would love to have that jersey I really would love to have that jersey. That's my, was well, one of my minor grails in a way, but getting head, head, I can tell you, I do not like Alexi Lalas as an analyst. Live, having lived, lived in the United States, I was so disappointed. But when I saw that Alexi Lalas guy at USA 994, I totally identified with him. And to a degree, I guess I still do, although my style is definitely not based on Alexi Lalas. In any case, same problem. I think the US definitely showed that they are the better team. They're a really well-run team that has just one problem, scoring goals. And you could see that. Uh, I think there was a chance by Weyer early on. Creating chances and, you know, controlling the game is not a, a, a problem, especially if McKenney is running the midfield as he did uh, in this game. The goal though came then, uh, beautifully played. McKenny sees this darting, Juve to Milan, and uh, cuts it across where Pulisic uh, puts it away and then crashes into the goalkeeper that injures himself, which is probably a major scare for the US because at halftime he had to come, come on. Up until that point, it gotta be said that uh, the US were firmly in control. Iran either too chaotic and most of the time too passive. However, it changed in the second half. The game became very erratic with Pulisic coming off. I think it was already a little bit harder for um, the, the US to create some uh, stuff on site. But I always felt there's one team in control of, of the game and Iran is just uh, chaotically attacking. But the longer the game went, the US did not make the second goal. 
it of course became the anti dangerous and they were actually the only real chance in the second half were all Iran chances. There were two headers uh, that were really near misses. One, uh, especially I think just before uh, the end of regulation, should have probably gone, 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 gone in. There was one that was then called off a shot that just went wide. It was right there. And maybe Iran even had more chances in that game, but I felt when I looked at the way the overall game, how the US controlled it, I think the US were the better team in that sense, did deserve it. Honestly, while I always call the US is one of my family teams, my allegiances were a little bit split in that one. I definitely would not have minded Iran uh, getting through there, but as it often goes, then I'm happy if the better team goes through. And I think it did in the end. Um, so we have final standings. I mean, yes, of course, the Netherlands, Senegal, England, United States are through. Um, I hope that the teams that will defend to more, uh, in the next few days their uh, leads in, in, in the group, that they're not getting as passive as, as those two, uh, Iran and uh, Ecuador, were today. Uh, but you know the only thing that's really of interest uh, here is ac actually in, on that graphic who will win and go on. But you know that we'll see. Better to look at the projections um, where we can see the Netherlands have a seven percent chance of winning, England a nine percent chance of winning. So uh, that is interesting. But let's go uh, at the bracket. The bracket actually uh, looks pretty much the same as it did yesterday with the two crucial changes. We have the Netherlands against the United States up on top and then with England against Senegal uh, in on the second part of the, of the bracket which I think those are two rather interesting ties could be open both of these I don't think they are that uh, a foregone conclusions as for oval favorites we see now that and it's very tight between Portugal England and Spain because they're rather level with each other Spain are draw, dropping below but don't pay too much credence to that it's basically because Portugal and England are already through and Spain is not quite through yet otherwise Spain would be ahead Brazil France Argentina I don't trust the Argentinians I don't trust the Ar Argentinians but I really wonder meanwhile about the English are is this a team that we are overlooking and attack the Netherlands although the Netherlands have not shown me as much but I think if the England if England gets hot they actually could do something Tomorrow, we probably have two, uh, again, two slots. It's Tunisia has a chance, but it's between Australia and Denmark, I think, more, 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 more or less. And yes, Australia will probably defend, and unless they really learn from the lessons from today. The second set of fixtures is way more open because uh, Poland, Argentina, that I think will is the pick of the bunch, but Saudi Arabia, Mexico, all four teams could go through. Uh, there are quite some permutations in there. Um, if Argentina and Saudi Arabia win their games, both of them are through. So uh, this will be really, really interesting overall. So yeah, group stage for A and B is in the books. Let me know what you thought about the games today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more videos like these. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.